Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and boy do I have some good video for you today. So here we go. Um, let's start here. John Deaton's law firm tweeted this out. We want to make sure that all of these, listen, remember when we started folks? When we started it was only the people in XRP that were talking about all this. And then we got Fox Business and we have got Forbes and then Fox Business. Now look at all these we got now that are covering this story. So, of course, Charles Gasparino was the first after Forbes, that is. Um, we've got Eleanor Tarrant that works with him. Then we've got um, this Sheila, I'm not going to try to say everybody's names because I can't pronounce names. Staff writer at the New Yorker has joined in. Then we've got this Jody Godoy from uh, Reuters. And now we've got this Kieran Stacy from the Financial Times. And let's see, maybe this is Financial Times too. So you see what's happening, folks? The dominoes are falling. I call them truth dominoes, or as the official cool guy, the digital asset investor channel calls them, trumors. Okay, so now we've got more and more people that are helping to spread the trumors. Okay, I covered in the last video the whole, um, you know, the 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 guy from Ethereum, the from Ethereum going to do a presentation in North Korea, Korea, and so I, I retweeted that and I said. Does anyone know if Ethereum has regulatory clarity over in North Korea like they do in the U.S.? Just wondering if they got a piece of paper in their pocket from Kim Jong-un. Um, okay, now, one of my favorite people in crypto is Charles Hoskinson. He's one of the few guys that left Ethereum. I think they kicked him out when he basically uh, disagreed with Vitalik Buterin's approach. Um, so, listen to this. There's no greater example of that than what's happening with XRP at the moment. Despite the fact that Ripple is being sued by the Securities Exchange Commission for an unregistered security, the network is still running and billions of dollars of XRP are still trading, deals are still being made, and infrastructure is still being deployed. Ordinarily, uh, when such an event happens, the entire ecosystem rolls up and collapses for fear of the custodial entity disappearing. But that has not occurred in that case. Now, Bitcoin is 10 times larger and has a 10 times larger ecosystem. So if very counterproductive negative regulation comes, that network is still going to function as it's written. All it means is my life as an American entrepreneur is made considerably more difficult. And my country is now left behind in one of the greatest innovations since the creation of the Internet. And we'll just have to sit on the sidelines as a country and watch other countries exceed. Okay, now remember his thoughts there because this video is going to really disgust you, I'm afraid. Um, but it is what it is. Um, I believe this topic would be an interesting, uh, would be very interesting in an interview. All the personal relationships and interactions at Ethereum in the early days. This is Charles Hoskinson replying to a tweet. Remember, do you remember how every time any digital asset comes anywhere near the threat towards Ethereum or Bitcoin, Mike Novogratz pops up and starts bashing it and saying he really doesn't understand it. He did the same thing with XRP. He's doing it with Cardano here. Last question before I go shower. Can anyone make a real bull use a real bull case for, for ADA? Does anyone build on it? Use it? Anyway, so this is this is the modus operandi. I think I'm saying that right. Well, um, this guy commented on it. And then Charles Hoskinson says, Mike is fully aware of who I am, coin. Joe Lubin was his roommate at Princeton. So I would love to talk to Mike Novogratz, uh, or not Mike Novogratz. I'd love to talk to, um, in fact, I don't know if I've ever said this on the channel, but when I was at the Bitcoin Miami conference, Mike Novogratz was standing there talking to someone and I walked literally right by him, within five feet of him. He had no idea who I was. Um, but anyway, I would love to, to interview Charles. I don't even do interviews, but I would do one with Charles Hoskinson. But A, because I think he's one of the good guys. But B, because 
I would I don't think there's any anybody on the planet who knows more about the early days of Ethereum who is honest and would actually tell the truth about it than Charles Hoskinson and for that reason I would love to hear his stories okay and I for the record Charles if you're out there listening I would have that conversation with you off the record and never put it on my channel if you wanted to have that too um, it doesn't have to be on video so um, anyway, if anybody knows Charles, tell him I said it. Okay, now, uh, speaking of Mike Novogratz, he tells a story here that I wanted you to hear. Listen to this. Yep. And I learned if you're a rich guy, you don't break the rules. Right? Uh, so I was like, ah, but I could buy OTC. And so I end up uh, calling Vitalik. I met once, didn't really know me. And I bought Ethereum from Vitalik. You OTC it ETH from Vitalik? At 96 cents. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how much, but it's not an insignificant amount. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then I started buying more OTC in the market. And so now I own a, a lot of Ethereum. Uh, I'd call it $1.50. A, a lot. And, you know, I went away to... For those of you wondering, I believe it was 500,000 Ethereum that he bought. Uh, I came back. It was trading at... They had two weeks there, it's trading at five or six. It started going up. I mean, this is now March. And I realized Joe no longer needed my money because he owned a lot of Ethereum. Right, and, right. and it, you know, you don't want to arbitrage your friend. No. Uh, and I was thinking, how would I contribute? We have a very similar, well, he has a much more technical skill set than me, but he's a good leader, he's a good speaker. And so I said, oh, I'm going to just cheer for him. And I'm just going to be a private investor. Uh, and I hired a young kid, a guy named John West, who was great. And he actually pretty much lived at the consensus office. I said, you can go live with those guys. And so it was fun to get a bird's eye view of the beginning. Even the Dow hack, we, uh, I was on the conference calls listening as the old wise guy, just thinking. Uh, and trading. I just have trading in my blood. And so I'd buy and sell. And Ether went to 20. I sold a bunch and bought it back at 8. Um, All right. So there's that. And then there is this. This is one... Um, uh, the, the date on this YouTube video was was um, 11 to 18 so it's a few months after the Hinman speech now here's what's crazy about what he's saying here to me that every time I've seen his tweet tweets and all this stuff and every time XRP goes up in value like like clockwork he goes on CNBC or on Twitter to make sure he tries to scare everybody into into not understanding it and selling whatever whatever he's up to well what he always does is he always compares XRP. Well, this is this is XRP, and he compares it almost to like its its equity in in Ripple. But he never makes that comparison with Ethereum. He he tries to present it like, oh, Ethereum's this thing that's just all oh, decentralized. It's not in any way tied to a company. Oh, it's just it's this thing that's just out there and all. Yeah, right. Meanwhile, they're they're having a trans transition from proof of work to to proof of stake because it's not decentralized and they've got teams together that are working on this and it's all being coordinated by Joe Lubin and we know that because Joe Lubin said so. Okay? So that's a bunch of BS. And so then the once you realize that's a bunch of BS and that yeah, there are there are companies more than one company that's closely tied to how Ethereum ends up performing because if they don't keep working on it, Ethereum proof of work is going to be a disaster and they know it can't scale. So, and, and the price ultimately would reflect. So the question you have to ask yourself is why does he pretend to totally understand Ethereum, but every time XRP gets anywhere close, he starts bashing it or Cardano, ADA, same thing. And remember, in my opinion, there are only two techs Two technology, or now I would add Cardano to it, but it, it, if you go back, Stellar and XRP are the only things that have worked. I mean, that haven't had, like proof of work doesn't work. We know that. That's why they're transitioning to proof of stake. So, so why every time? And then we know we know Charles Hoskinson has been feverishly working on Cardano for all these years, and and before he did anything, he made sure he had it right. Now he's going into smart contracts. So the question is, why is this guy out there bashing the things that work anytime that they get anywhere close or do a surge or anything like that? I've always found that very interesting. Now, um, and then there's this. Here's Vitalik Buterin. Listen to this. 
your I presume that your net worth mm -hmm. crashed a great deal. It got run up and then came came it, back it down. Did. Yeah. And were you happy in any way about that? Relieved. Relieved. Yeah. So when uh, the at the, right at the top of the big bubble, like in December 2017, um, when e uh, Bitcoin was hitting 20,000, ETH was hitting uh, 1,400, I, I made this tweet and well, a series of tweets uh, and that kind of became somewhat famous within the space where I basically said the cryptocurrency space has reached half a trillion dollars. Does does it deserve it? Like do the things that it's actually accomplished, like hold a candle to the uh, promises that right. the market is ascribing to it. And I mean, the subtext of my answer is not yet. And I was uh, proven very right uh, fairly quickly. And- But you didn't short it, did you? So, the I, mean, I did can get and uh, get the Ethereum Foundation to sell about uh, seventy thousand ETH, like basically at the top, and that's doubled our runway now. So, like the, and it was one good decision that had a lot, and that had a lot of impact, but you know, did not short. I okay, um, fascinating stuff. They doubled their runway by selling seventy thousand. Ethereum in December 2017. And remember, that's before Bill Hinman came out and said it was de sufficiently decentralized. Remember that? So does that mean they sold a security? I'm not sure. Maybe Congress should ask them because Gary Gensler sure as hell isn't asking them. Now, um, I wanted to show you this too. And I was, I was saying, if this is Ethereum, the Ethereum Foundation address, we are able to track sales like, um, are we able to track sales like this one. I'm curious and not tech savvy, but this tweet shows you that apparently this is the Ethereum, one of these is the Ethereum Foundation, um, because they're saying here this is when Ethereum Foundation transferred 35,000 Ethereum to Kraken. So if they're transferring it from this to this, I'm assuming they're going to Kraken. So this would be the address of the Ethereum Foundation. So my question is this is if you remember this is what Novogratz was talking about a minute ago Ethereum Foundation sold Ethereum to Novogratz and if you look down here Vitalik Buterin um, he confirmed it I'm grateful that Mike Novogratz and other purchasers are, um, if it weren't for them anyway um, he bought for it was the Ethereum Foundation not me as an individual so Ethereum Foundation sold it to Mike Novogratz, all right? And the date of that, um, as I've been, I've watched the videos, uh, Mike Novogratz said he went in the office where Joseph Lubin was. I want to say that it was like late 2015. I want to say it was January, don't quote me, but I think it was around January 2016. It was either January 2016 or January 2015 when Mike Novogratz bought the Ethereum, but I think that it was 2016. And so he bought it from the Ethereum Foundation. So that means he, it had to go to Mike Novogratz from that wallet right there, I'm assuming. Okay, moving along. And then there's this. I put this one together and said, open your eyes, Congress. SEC sues an American company, Ripple, while leaving Swiss-based Ethereum alone, which did an ICO and sold to American investors. Two Ethereum founders are from Canada and one is born in Russia. Watch this. Oh to, okay, how do we compete with China? How do we keep up? And, you know, till now, frankly, U.S. regulators have actually helped China by officially giving clarity to the two protocols effectively controlled by Chinese miners, Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's a mistake. Um, we've got to also give uh, clarity at least and maybe even support if this really becomes a tech cold, cold war, like it's looking like it will be, uh, to technologies that are more favorable to us and its allies stewardship of the next gen global financial system otherwise we face a potential catastrophe you know i don't know what the odds are but there's some meaningful uh, you know probability if china was to get control over the next gen financial system i mean that that could really be devastating to american uh, power and its allies ability to, to uh, you know uh, make payments to uh, defense payments to uh, an ally uh, American banks that might be blocked or throttled back on, on uh, how, how fast their payments go. 
you know, you can even see some terrible situation where a U.S. company that has a low Chinese social credit score could be blocked from that new infrastructure. You know, those are bad outcomes. Even if there's a small percentage chance that happens, we've, we've, we've got to check that to make sure that we're involved and we're, we're competitive as a country. But now it's a third party, a country, North Korea, using that along with a new system called a cross-border payment system, right. a CIPS which is competing with SWIFT. It is the Chinese equivalent to SWIFT. They, they in fact, they, in fact uh, they, they actually took the software from SWIFT with the memorandum of understanding. They, they took that software and created their own messaging system. And are there other countries that are using it or might potentially use it? And is there a tipping point at which point the global economy will be, in fact, bifurcated? Again, I think it, we're decades away from China developing the robust capital markets and the legal systems to compete with the U.S. dollar. But to your question, yes, other countries have adopted the CIPS. Russia has back in 2019. They entered into a bunch of agreements. Okay, just so you know, this was a was a Harvard. Dig, it was called Digital Currency Wars that was done at Harvard. And Gary Getz, or your current SEC chairman was there and he was running the war. He's fully aware of the dangers of what's going on with China and Russia and North Korea. He's fully aware, but guess what? He is suing the American company Ripple while, well, I'll just show you. This is who he's giving a free pass to. He's not doing anything to Ethereum. This is where Putin, this is in Forbes, um, August 29th, 2017, this is where Putin and Ethereum and Vitalik Buterin, um, I don't know if he met or Vitalik Buterin met with somebody else, a match made in fintech. Russian President Vladimir Putin endorses cryptocurrency and Bitcoin rival Ethereum earlier this year. Okay, and then I tweeted this out and I asked a, a question that I would 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 respond to if I was a congressman, something that would hit home with me, and that is, what will you tell your, Congress, what will you tell your children and grandchildren that you did about the SEC suing an American company Ripple while giving a free pass to Ethereum who is meeting with the Russians? They've also been to China, I can tell you that. Right here, according to Bloomberg, Putin was attracted to Ethereum as a potential tool to help Russia diversify its economy beyond oil and gas. After meeting Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin, Putin said that the digital economy isn't a separate industry. It's essentially the foundation for creating a brand new business model. And add to that, folks, Congress, if you're listening, any of you out there, this is what Vitalik Buterin called you. He said, feeble Americans in Russian, he said that. Okay, now I'm gonna reiterate, I don't want Ethereum to fail. I don't want any of their companies related to them to fail. I don't want any of these people to fail. I want Bitcoin to do well. I want Ethereum to do well. I want XRP to do well. I want Cardano to do well. I want all digital assets who can compete on a level playing field and survive and do well in a competitive environment. I want all of those to do well. Somebody somewhere does not want there to be competition. Not me. That's what I want. I want them all to do well, but on a level playing field. And finally, Eleanor Terrett that works with Charles Gasparino at Fox Business said, Happy Thursday, y'all. Tomorrow is Crypto Friday. And Charles Gasparino and I have a special guest joining us on Twitter on our Twitter live at 4 p.m. Eastern time to discuss Ripple versus SEC and what's next for the XRP Army now that 30,000 of you are getting a voice in court. Can you guess who it is? Stay tuned. I'm sure today sometime we will find out who that is. I wanted to finish up this video by letting you, you know, I'm going to hit the refresh button to see if it's still there. It usually doesn't last long at all, but link to who is one of my sponsors and I'm their customer. They have just added Ripple private equity, not to be confused with XRP, the digital asset. Ripple, the private equity has been added to their platform, but it's only for accredited investors and you will have to go and open an account and work with them to find out if you're accredited. 
but this um, I've got links to all of their apps if you want to download their apps and there and you can go to linqto.com if you would like to um, sign up for an account and find out if you're accredited and go through that process I'm the digital asset investor I'm not an investment advisor this is for entertainment purposes only please subscribe hit the like button and tell your friends and family that at least for now there's some ripple private equity up on the link to platform thank you for